Eagles to a, another edition of Trad Cat Night special guest exclusive break here on the TradCatNight.org website. Folks, today is uh, February the 24th, 2021. I hope you all are having a very, very blessed Lenten season already. I ask you all to continue to keep me in prayer as I will for you. And folks, we've got a dandy of a podcast lined up for you uh, this afternoon uh, with first time guests of Mother Irene and Sister Anne Marine from the Carmelites of the Holy Face of Jesus out there in Ireland. Um, Father uh, Paul Kramer is very close uh, to them. And we're going to be talking uh, not only about their journey, uh, the religious life, we want to talk the Holy Face devotion. We want to talk about the recent attacks that many of you traditionalists uh, know about. We're also here to support them uh, financially. So we obviously want to give them time to let us know how we can donate to them. I'll be making a donation uh, at some point this afternoon, so I encourage you all to do so yourself. Yeah, before we hand it over uh, to Mother Irene and Sister Amarine, just a quick mention. We've got web conferences, six of them done already here at Trancat Night, our most uh, previous one this past weekend, the Scared or Prepared, Survive and Thrive uh, web conference featuring some of the top preppers and survivalists uh, from around the world. If you want to pick up any of these web conferences, contact me at apostleofmarriotthotmail.com. I also encourage you... Uh, to continue to support this outlet. Again, this is Catholic Independent Media, if you will. Uh, so through your donations, uh, I keep with the ability to do this work full-time, and you all know how much uh, I'm putting out. I could do four or five shows a day. Uh, today we might end up doing six when all is said and done. So uh, I'm trying to get as, as, as much information as I can out to you folks. Um, so please do continue to support Track Cat Night. Don't forget about our Marie Julie Jehani movie on Vimeo. It took me 150 man hours to put together uh, it's two and a half hours long, um, so you can go to Marie. Uh, you can go to Vimeo.com, type in Marie Julie Jehenny, and in my humble opinion, next to Padre Pio of the past hundred years, I think she's the most prolific mystic in uh, the church. In the church, uh, she held the stigmata longer than Padre Pio and more profound. Uh, Sixty plus years, she once fasted five years without food or water. She, of uh, of course, spoke to the atrocities happening in Europe, but specifically France. But then she also talks about the great period uh, in the church to come, which we, of course, are all uh, awaiting for in conjunction with the Fatima message. So, folks, continue to invite your friends, family members on over here to Track at Night. I'll do the sponsors at the end of the program because I want to get right into this uh, the interviewing here with uh, Mother Irene and Sister Anne Marie. So again, as I mentioned, uh, briefly off air, if you could talk as best you can into uh, as close as you can to the computer, and maybe we'll start with uh, Mother Irene, and perhaps we can um, start this conversation, this podcast, uh, by getting to know you a little bit uh, in your journey and how you became a religious, and you could tell us a little bit more uh, about the Carmelites of the Holy Face of Jesus. Yes, um, good evening, Eric. Um, good evening to all, all your listeners. Can you hear? So, my name is uh, Mother Irene of the Holy Face, and um, I'm a native of Ireland. I made my vows uh, I- 30 years ago. I did try my vocation a number of times in different contemplative orders, but they were too liberal. So I did not complete my formation in these orders. I always wanted to be a Carmelite, but back um, in my youth, there were no traditional Carmelites in Ireland. So I ended up um, making vows before an archbishop in Ireland at the time. That was in 1990 um, to live a vocation as a hermit because in that way I felt I could truly live as best I could according to tradition. Um, As time went on, our Lord Jesus gave me many graces when I lived in solitude in County Mayo, and one of them was to bring me back to, to holy tradition around about 1995 and 97. Um, The Archbishop at the time gave me permission to receive young ladies who would want to join me to live the same life as I was living. However, that changed very much when I returned to Holy Tradition. He was not favorable towards me. So 
I, I had a great difficulty trying to find the traditional Latin Mass where I was living in the west of Ireland. And that journey took me to the Midlands first and then here down south. And um, after 30 years, God sent me a beautiful young lady from New Zealand uh, to join me, who was also searching for holy tradition, a, a traditional way of life, of a Carmelite way of life, and she could not find it um, in her country. So she joined me in, 19, in, in 2017. And uh, that's where we are at the moment. We, we, we are living um, a Carmelite way of life according to the primitive rule of um, St. Albert, the rule of St. Albert. It is different than the way the discalced Carmelites live. They live under one roof and they share all the liturgical hours in common. They have much more of a Cenobitic way of life, whereas we follow the rule of St. Albert as it is written. So our way of life is more semi eremitical It affords us a great deal, much more solitude and time of prayer and contemplation. And how many of them are, uh, 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 nuns are there? We we uh, are we are only two at the moment. We, okay. We would love to receive other young ladies, but unfortunately, sadly, there are very, very few vocations to be found in Ireland, and even uh. fewer for tradition. Um, there we often get inquiries from young ladies over in the United States and we did have a beautiful young girl in uh, Nigeria who wanted to join us but then this COVID business started and it restricted uh, travel so she is very sad she has just decided to live close to a traditional priest in her country and live as a laywoman as best she can um, and hopefully, yes. No, I was going to say, I was going to say, hopefully, as a result of this uh, webcast, uh, this podcast, maybe, maybe we can help uh, to influence uh, some young ladies uh, who are here. Because uh, my this apostolate extends internationally. I mean, we literally have followers in every country, specifically Ireland, too, of course. So maybe we can uh, spark a little mm -hmm. fire. Yeah, spark yes. a little fire. But uh, yes. this is very interesting here. Uh, perhaps we can get Sister Anne uh, to talk a little bit more about her journey. But as we're getting to know uh, one another. Many of my uh, followers don't know this, but I was seriously contemplating becoming uh, a monk or a hermit myself back in the Arkansas area back in my 20s. Uh, but then I kind of decided that God would have a different uh, path through discernment. Uh, but here at uh, Trad Cat Night, uh, hopefully the Order of the Eagle, um, what we are stressing is uh, the two wings of silence and solitude too. So I live like an urban hermit, even though like I live in a house, like a, your, your, your everyday, uh, you know, lay person. Well, I very much am a contemplative. Mm -hmm. I'm currently writing a book myself, Fortress of the Soul. I'm very much into gardening. I love nature. More, more along the lines of St. Francis uh, though, uh, sort of his uh, spirituality, I guess, or charism. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I very much am an urban hermit. Uh, over like the last five years, I don't even think I've left town. <laughs> really, yes, to be honest yes, with you. So yes. uh, I, you know, I very much am kind of rooted. I've got a ton of books. I try to do a lot of reading and writing. As a matter of fact, I'll send you pictures of the chapel room I just put together here. Um, and uh, you know, uh, it's it's open arms. I'm, I'm waiting for a traditional priest or or whoever would be invited to to kind of live on. Uh, premises here at Track at Night. Uh, but in any case, uh, Sister Anne, if we could maybe get a, a few minutes in regards to your um, uh, your journey, uh, your walk into, into finding uh, Mother Irene and, and uh, maybe talk a little bit more about the order. Oh, yes. Good evening, Eric. Uh, my journey uh, to finding Mother Irene really started when I was about 12 years old. I felt a great desire to become a nun. As yet, I didn't know which order, but it became clear to me after much prayer. And by the time I was about 15, it was clear to me that God was calling me to join the Carmelites. Um, at that time, we had been going to the SSPX, 
and I had tried writing to the ACSPX sisters. Um, I had considered the active vocation, like of teaching and nursing. Um, but as time went on, I realized that God was calling me to the contemplative life. And then I began to search for traditional Carmelites. Um, I wrote to several of them and was disappointed uh, to find they were Siddhavikantists. So I was searching for three years to find a traditional Carmel. And Father MacDonald from Ireland, he traveled to visit New Zealand to offer the Mass there. And I asked him, did he know of any traditional orders which he could recommend? So then he told me a little bit about Mother Irene, whom he, knew, who he has known for a long time. And he told me that she was hoping to start up a religious community. He thought, however, that she was more Benedictine than Carmelite. So anyway, I wrote to her and her reply was so encouraging. She told me that she too had a great longing for the Carmelite way of life and that she would be glad to receive me. So we corresponded for some time before I eventually managed to come over in March 2017. And I guess our journey has continued together since then. Wow, that's truly fantastic. And I, I'm, I'm well aware of Father McDonald because I post uh, some of his sermons and his catechesis uh, teachings uh, right there on YouTube. There's a YouTube channel called Joy Steps. I'm not sure who, who Joy is. I don't think she's a part of um, uh, my apostle, you know, a follower of my apostle, but Father McDonald, um, I, I very much post his videos, so I, I know who you're talking about. Now, isn't that such a beautiful and wonderful thing about uh, the Catholic faith that we have so many different charisms? Uh, and depending upon you know our upbringing and sort of leaning towards uh, certain saints or whatnot, we have the ability to kind of you know navigate and find uh, our home uh, in discerning God's will. Now, one of the things I was hoping we could talk about later, we, we want to obviously get into the Holy Face devotion, but I'm hoping we could talk uh, a little bit more uh, about uh, the power of the rosary and the scapular. But in regards to the contemplative life, maybe we could uh, hand it back to uh, Mother Irene now again. Um, again, I live very much uh, like an urban hermit, although I'm going to say the duty, uh, the crisis in the church, it, 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 it calls us to kind of come out of the cave, so to speak, and to get into the fight. And I'm always I was mentioning uh, St. Catherine of Siena, also another powerful contemplative who during the time of a schism, during her time, she used to bang, bang on the doors of the monasteries, inviting all those contemplatives to kind of come out and get into the fight. So uh, we're obviously in a crisis now in the church, and this is why I do what I do. I kind of come out of my cave, so to speak, and I wish I could just um, you know go behind the scenes and kind of be forgotten about in, in that sense. But uh, maybe perhaps that day is forthcoming. But if we could talk a little bit more about the contemplative life, um, what, what what does the average day look like? Uh, you know, from from morning to uh, the time you retire. And I was hoping we could talk uh, a little bit about the rosary and scapular, uh, since you are uh, Carmelites. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, our specific, our particular way of way daily horarium begins at um, four a.m. in the morning. Uh, that is the time we rise. Um, that is followed by matins and lauds. Now, because we are semi eremitical we, we do these liturgical hours alone in our cell. Um, then we come together, then we do um, a half an hour of meditation. We then come together to do prime and uh, we return to our cell and we have um, a very light breakfast like uh, it would it would um, consist of nothing more than uh, a few slices of bread and some coffee or water. Um, we then pray terse 
again, we pray that privately in, in our cells. We do not pray it together as would discalced uh, Carmelite nuns. Um, we then give ourselves to some work. And then we have um, meal, a meals, a main meal at 12 o'clock. Or we, sorry, we do sext then, and then we have a main meal. I should have mentioned too, in the early hours of the morning after we pray uh, matins and lords, we have that period, especially for studying Holy Scripture and the fathers of the church. We, um, we then have between one and two o'clock, we, we, we have a siesta. After that, if it is Sunday, we will have an hour recreation. Or if it is a weekday, we normally will carry on and do some more work until, until um, after we prayed known at at uh, two o'clock we prayed is that correct yes yeah, sorry i i have to have the timetable in front of me here but um then we do some work we meet together again at 10 to five. Ten, 10 minutes to five in the evening we pray vespers and we then have another half hour of meditation we have um, our a light supper in the evening during during the um, September the 14th until Easter it would only be something very light like a bowl of soup and then if if it is outside of the Lenten period, we will have a, um, an hour's recreation in the evening, in the weekdays, except on um, Wednesdays and, and fr fr Fridays, yes. We, we do not have recreation during that time. Um, and that's, that's about it, um, Eric. Um. You know, you know, we have yeah. Compline then in the evening. We also share Compline together in the evening. Um, we pray immediately after we pray Compline together. We, we do the Chaplet of the Holy Face with our arms extended. Mm. Because that is the particular charism of our way of life, is the devotion and reparation to the Holy Face. Mm. And it's truly our religious orders, folks, that are holding uh, holding the church together at this uh, very uh, in this very dark hour. So we have to continue to keep Mother Irene, uh, Sister Anne Marie, and uh, those traditional orders uh, in our prayers. Maybe we can hand it back to uh, Sister Anne, and we can continue uh, along the same lines uh, in regards to um, you know praying the rosary. Uh, obviously, scapular. I wear brown sc uh, scapular. Uh, I try to pray the rosary daily and as often as I can. Um, but then maybe even specifically, uh, Sister Anne-Marie, maybe you could tell us, um, is there anything specifically different that you do during the Lenten season where we're highlighting prayer, penance, fasting, almsgiving? Um, maybe you could give us an, an idea of what life is like. Is it, is it heightened uh, during a Lent? Well, during, the, during Lent, we do not have eggs or dairy products in our diet, except on Sundays, um, because we don't have meat at any time of the year. Um, so that is kind of an extra sacrifice we do during Lent, um, also during Advent. Uh, then, as Mother said, we have least recreations, so that allows us more time for prayer and for study. Um, we have been privately, at least I have been for Lent, doing the Way of the Cross privately. Um, Mother has something else, which of course she hasn't told me. Um, we, have, we each have private resolutions we've taken for Lent um, to make it a more intense time of prayer and penance. We would fast now, more. Now, now when we say uh, study, could, maybe you could tell us a little bit more details into that. Is it... 
are you looking into particular saints? Are you looking into like the crisis of the church? When you, when you or reading more of the fathers of the church? I know uh, I mentioned that I've got this chapel room put together, and I just ordered hundreds of new books. I mean, from fathers on the church, uh, all you know, uh, all of basically Thomas Aquinas's work. But when you say study, like what what specifically um, are you studying? Well, most especially the Holy Scripture that forms a great part of our study. We do what is called Lexio Divina, which means we would read read it very slowly, but meditating on what we read. Um, that forms a great part of our study. Then also we would study relevant topics. Um, for example, I have been studying communism and devotion to the Holy Face. Then we have studied the crisis in the church, and especially during my novitiate, Mother used to do classes with me, and we would cover together all about the Carmelite spirituality, um, the fathers of the church, uh, the Celtic monasticism, and various other topics relevant to our way of life. Now, since you mentioned uh, communism, and thank you, thank you so much for that, um, perhaps we can hand it back now to uh, Mother Irene. You have a quote right here on your website. The website, by the way, is carmeliteholyface.com. I'll repeat that, carmeliteholyface.com. And under their history section, you have a quote from Archbishop Lefebvre, and it says this, Without monasteries, without the examples of the contemplative religious consecrated to the continual praise of God, the Church will never recover from the present crisis. In order to traverse this present crisis, there must be more monasteries, more souls willing to devote their whole life to prayer uh, and intercession. And obviously, as a part of that reparation, we need more victim uh, souls. Um, so perhaps, uh, uh, Mother Irene, maybe we could talk a little bit more um, about Ireland specifically. Uh, again, I bring on quite a few guests from Ireland. How they summarize it is, Ireland is already communist. <laughs> what, do you agree with that statement? And um, maybe you could uh, uh, talk furthermore about uh, a life of uh, reparation. Yes, um, indeed. I, I would not deny that Ireland is communist now. Um, but I think it is, it is everywhere. It is everywhere now, all over the world. It is not more communist than France or, or Britain. Um, I think um, what, what, when you quoted that, that piece from Archbishop Lefebvre, it, what comes to mind is that you were talking earlier about, uh, you know, St. Catherine knocking on the doors and saying, come out now, it's time to fight, you know, and to do some act, act, activity. But uh, this is the, the misunderstanding that many people have about the contemplative life. They, they see that it's all very well for you nuns. You're just sitting in there and you're praying all day and you have a great life. Um, it's certainly not an easy life. And if our life was so, what is the battle that the contemplative nuns are, are, are fighting is an invisible battle um, because we are not fighting against flesh and blood today. This is not about fighting um, the globalist um, leaders. Uh, leaders in America or elsewhere. These individual people with, with, with violent words or violent actions or any of these uh, pro-choice people um, this is this is a war of the devils. This is a war of of Satan, and it is an invisible war. We must fight, and the tools we need to fight this are are the tools of the weapons of of the passion of Christ. The weapons and the, uh, the the devotions that our Lord has given to us over the over the many centuries, the devotion to the Sacred Heart, the devotion to the Holy Face, the Rosary and the Scapula. Um, the image, the best image I I can give of a contemplative nun is the this is my favorite image is the one of Moses going up onto the mountain 
and Joshua was there at the front line fighting the Amaleks. These are an image of the enemy of the church because just as Israel is an image of the Catholic Church. But Moses, Moses must have felt also very helpless. So he was told to go up on the high mountain and Aaron and her went with him. And he took the staff in his hand and he held his, his arms up high, like in the form of a cross. And as long as he held his arms raised up, the Israelites prevailed over the enemy. And when he lowered his arms, the Amalaks prevailed. So Aaron and Hur helped Moses because his arms grew tired and they held his arms up until the sun went down. This is an image of a contemplative religious, men or women. The arms they raise up are the spiritual arms of prayer and penance. And they must keep those arms, those spiritual arms raised night and day by continuous reparation and intercession to our Lord so that his wrath may not come down upon the world. Mm. Yeah, wow. Well said. Absolutely well said. We'll hand it back to Sister Anne Marie now. And yeah, I've, I've used uh, Moses in regards to this apostle here at Track at Night. Uh, I just mentioned the two wings of silence and solitude. Also, the two wings of faith and hope. And I like that one. Two wings of prayer and uh, penance. And uh, so we, we see Moses extending his arms out like that, just like Jesus did on the cross in eagle like uh, fashion. So, St. Therese used to refer to our Lord as the great eagle. Um, so this is how we, we like to refer to him to at uh, track at night. But maybe we could ask the Sister Anne Marie, why, why is there not more um, contemplatives these days? Um, it's, it's one of those things where I was kind of called out of the world, and I was very much uh, a worldly man, a playboy type. I used to chase after women. I was in the clubs. I was in the bars. I was addicted to alcohol. Uh, I, I mean, I was, I was a moral monster. Uh, but then God put me on my back. Uh, for a multitude of years to kind of get my act together. And as a result of this, I, I've, I've never left uh, Steubenville. I'm not sure if you've, you've heard of the town. There's a famous Novus Ordo College here called Franciscan. Uh, so Scott Hahn's my neighbor. I'm not sure if you've seen Scott Hahn on EWTN or whatnot, but he's actually my neighbor. So it's uh, very interesting uh, to have that sort of dynamic, me being uh, very much a traditionalist. And uh, I'll say humbly, uh, Scott Hahn's still having to have to figure it out somewhat. Um, mm -hmm. But why... Why aren't there more contemplatives? And I always point uh, when, when I'm trying to help other people understand that story in Scripture, uh, Sister Anne, uh, in regards to Mary being the better way, right? The Mary and Martha story where Martha's getting a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit perturbed uh, because she's out doing this and that. And there's Mary just uh, sort of gazing upon our Lord. And, and our Lord says she has, cho she has chosen the better path. Why don't people choose? Uh, the better path, Sister Anne. I think it's because they have too many distractions in the world nowadays. Especially if you can talk it to them, I can't hear you, uh, Sister Anne. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I think nowadays there are too many distractions in the world. Uh, too many people spend most of their time or a great part of their time on the cell phones or on the computer, on the internet, communicating with friends. Um, they have little time for God and little time for prayer and the faith is weak uh, they haven't been taught the faith the great majority of people today have not been taught the faith from their youth and they do not live for God they live more for the present moment and for the pleasures of the world so our vocation to many, especially among the young people nowadays, would not make sense. It only makes sense to those who have a deep faith. 
Yeah, well said. Absolutely well said. Thank you, Sister Ann, for that. Now, Mother Irene, I know you you were both prepared to talk about the Holy Face devotion in recent times. Uh, I've been circling back to this uh, devotion. Uh, I've picked up a few books uh, myself in, in regards to the devotion. We have uh, a picture of the Holy Face here in one of my uh, contemplative or, or meditation uh, rooms. But specifically, to battle communism, we know this whole, this um, devotion is so strong. So during this Lenten season, uh, all those uh, Trancat Night listeners, uh, let's all uh, get on board with this uh, devotion, if we could, please. Um, but go ahead, um, Mother Irene, if you would like to begin to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, calling towards the Holy Face uh, devotion. Yes, well, I, I'm, 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 um, I'm going to hand you over to actually oh. send, hand you back to Sister because it is she who wishes to talk more about it um, in 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 more detail than myself. Um, if that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and again, as close as you can to the to the microphone. Very kind good. Of okay. Yes. And just to give us some idea, how much time do we have? because this is a very large topic and there's many things we could talk about. Sure, I mean, I'm prepared. I mean, we could go on uh, as long as you'd like, really. I mean, I'm not necessarily pressed on time. So, I mean, we, we have, you know, uh, I don't know. We, we can go on as, as long as you want, really. I mean, I don't know, another half hour, is that fine? 15 minutes, half Maybe. hour, how yes. long? Yes, yes, yes. That, yes. that sounds okay. good. Okay, okay. Yeah, so please, please so, feel free uh, to... Would you, would you like to hear tonight more about a general history of the devotion to the Holy Face or this devotion in relation to communism? Um, well, let's, let's start first with the background uh, a little bit, and then we'll, we'll, we'll parlay that to a conversation in regards to combating communism. Okay, well, this devotion, you could say, really began when Adam and Eve were banished from paradise. They had been used to a great familiarity with God. He used to come down and walk in the Garden of Paradise. And after they had sinned, they were afraid to see him, to meet him. Which means that beforehand, they were used to doing this. And when they were banished from the Garden of Paradise, they surely would have had a great longing to regain what they had lost. Because we were made in the image and likeness of God, we all have this longing, this longing for God deep down within us. And even if we do not realize it, we are always hungering for God and only he can satisfy us. Um, this devotion to the Holy Face, to the face of God, was carried on down through the ages among the patriarchs and prophets, the holy men and women of the Old Testament. They would have told their children, passed on the tradition, the story of Adam and Eve. They would have told their descendants, taught them to seek God. Moses, again, is a perfect example of this. He went up on a mountain to pray and three times, I believe it is in the book of Exodus about chapter 32, three times he said to God, show me thy face. But God said to him, no man can see my face and live. Now that was in the Old Testament, but when our Lord was born, man was able for the first time to behold the face of God. Our Lady and Saint Joseph were the very first adorers of the Holy Face. This Holy Face of Jesus was venerated by a few disciples, his few disciples, by the shepherds, the Magi. And we have two precious relics, two images of the Holy Face, which he left to us. One is the veil of Veronica, and the other is the Holy Shroud. Um, Saint Jude, we, we could say, was one of the first apostles of the Holy Face. 
the holy shroud was given into his keeping and it was revealed to a holy nun that because of his name he was often mistaken for the traitor Judas and in order to prevent this happening he carried around with him an image of the holy face of Jesus so people would know that he was a true disciple of Christ. This seems to prefigure the middle of the holy face which we wear today. Now many painters throughout the centuries reproduced images of the holy face but it wasn't until the year 1845 that this devotion really came to be known. In 1845, from the years 1845 to 1848, a Carmelite nun in Tours, France, received revelations about the Holy Face and the importance of this devotion for our times. Her name was Sister Mary of St. Peter. Um, she, our Lord told her that this devotion was the weapon he had given the world to combat revolutionary men and he even mentioned communists by name. Now this is very remarkable because at that time Karl Marx had not even published his Communist Manifesto. He did not do this until the year 1848, the year that Sister Mary of St. Peter died. So communism was little known in those days. But now we see it everywhere. And this is the remedy which God has given us to battle it. There are many reasons why it is fitting that this devotion should be the weapon for communism. First of all, you could say that communism is only another form of the battle between good and evil the revolt of Satan and the rebellious angels. And so, like devotion to the Holy Face, its origins go to the beginning of human history. We were, as we said, created in the image and likeness of God. But communism tries to destroy this image it tries to destroy religion, to make us believe that there is no other God and to live for this life alone. Communism seeks to establish a paradise on earth, but the Christian knows that the only true happiness which will last is the beatific vision of the face of God. Communism tries to mask the identity of the person and this is shown especially in the wearing of the face mask. They try to make people only a number in a crowd and of no real importance. But for the Christian who is in the state of grace and who is made in the image and likeness of God, there is a great and important place laid up for him in heaven. Have you got all? Good, good. Go oh, fantastic. My goodness. Uh, unbelievable! Thank you so much for that, uh, Sister Anne. Uh, I was I was writing and taking uh, notes down uh, myself. And uh, listen, folks, um, we are so appreciative of Mother Irene and Sister Anne Marie uh, joining us here today. But before uh, we do let you go, 
um, if we could, uh, maybe back to Mother Irene in regards to um, recent trials and tribulations that you're dealing with because we want to finish off strong here in regards to helping you out right there on your website. Uh, folks, again, I'm going to give the website again, karmalightsholyface.com. There is a little section there called Donations, which you could go ahead and uh, click. Like I said, I'm going to be making a donation uh, within uh, the hour of, uh, of this program. I'm going to uh, make mention to some family members here, too. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, you all in, in union uh, with uh, what we're trying to do here at Track at Night through the, uh, the Immaculate and Sacred Hearts, we can get uh, a good number of folks uh, to donate uh, to their efforts and uh, cause. So, Mother, if, if you could explain uh, what specifically... Uh, you and Sister Anne are going through there. I know Father Father Kramer. It was like a month or two ago, and I'm always in contact with him uh, on on social media. And he he'll be on my show again. I think like over the next two days. And uh, he had made mention of that that demoniac woman in your your neighborhood who just was <laughs> is causing traditionals all kinds of problems there. And she actually threatened uh, Father Father Kramer. Let me listen to a message that was sent to her, uh, sent to him on Facebook. And this woman was running her mouth off. Uh, and I tell you what, I messaged her privately, and I said, "You, you don't, you don't want to go down that path. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to go down that path." To put, to put it mildly, so I'm hoping she's backed off a little bit. If I've got to, I'll go out there and take a plane personally and uh, come find where she's living. And I'll knock on the door. Um, but listen, uh, in all seriousness, we we know God is uh, is uh, giving us these trials and tribulations uh, to make us saints, right? So yes, you're dealing yes. with an awful lot there. So you have yes. our prayers. But g give us a, a good idea of what you're you're dealing with, and and then a anything else you would like to add that we didn't talk about today, mm -hmm. Mother Irene, uh, specifically with the donations. Uh, would, would be yes, great. yes. Well, we we have um, we have been blessed to have trials from the very beginning, Eric. From the very beginning, we started here in uh, 2016 we have been attacked um, by by the county council first and uh, next with this woman as you you mentioned um, with the county council uh, we 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 were forced to take we had some wooden cabins on our own site here and uh, some local holiday homeowners uh, were not happy with our presence in the area so they complained and we were unable to get planning permission no matter how we went about it the right way we could not get the planning permission he just ordered the county council um, planning executive ordered that we take all our cabins down um, even though they are hidden in in a lower part of um, this area, they are hidden way off the road with fencing. Anyway, that was the first battle we experienced, and the present the present battle we are up against is, as you said, this woman who continuously harasses us by phone calls and. When she goes to our GoFundMe website, she sees that the people are being very generous towards us. So she gets on to the Irish media, the newspaper people, who are more than happy to attack religious and Catholic priests and religious, especially if they be tra traditional. And um, we have just, this this seems to come around every two months or so it goes quiet for a while and then she starts again but it generally does us the world of good because these newspaper newspaper people their intention is malicious to smear our reputation but they usually mention that we are getting so much money from GoFundMe people, donate donors, and they make reference to our website, and some more people start helping us. So God writes straight with crooked lines, as it says, and where sin, <laughs> where sin abounds, grace does all the more abound. Amen. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. And as a result of this uh, program, I know you're going to get even more help and, and more, uh, well, I don't know if I want to call it publicity, but just, you know what I mean. I mean, to get the word out, hopefully we can spark uh, some hearts into uh, vocations here. And, um, wow, fantastic talk today. Was there anything else uh, that um, uh, either uh, Mother Irene or Sister Anne would like to say before, before we let you go? I mentioned the website a few more times. Uh, is there anything else that I can help help you um you know, get the word out on. We would like um, we would like that people would continue to pray for us um, so that we can move to the next stage. The people have been very generous to us so we have been able to purchase land but there is a derelict house on the land and uh, we do need to get that fixed up and we ask people to pray for us and continue to support us if they can that um, also we do not experience more attacks from from uh, the bureaucrats um, because it's 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 tremendously difficult uh, to carry on this way you 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 try to go down the right road but you keep on getting refusals because they just do not want contemplative or religious women in 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 these these um, individuals who are really Freemasons, they right. they are running the county council. They are running the government. And we know their hatred that they have towards Christ. Exactly, uh, towards the, exactly. Towards so we, we 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 greatly appreciate the prayers of the faithful that we will carry on this. Uh, we will carry on to be strong and carry on the battle that we will not become weak because the future the future um young girls hopefully are depending on us to remain strong so that they can join us because there are no other uh, traditional religious women in Ireland, traditional religious orders of women in Ireland. We are the only two following fully the holy tradition without compromise. Wow, absolutely, yes. And so before uh, I, I, I let you go, Sister Anne, is there anything else that you would like to add in conclusion? Thank you both for coming on the program today. Um, I was just wondering whether we could maybe say together the golden arrow prayer of reparation. Uh, I couldn't hear you there. In the name of the Father, Father and, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Ghost. Amen. May the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most incomprehensible and unutterable name of God be always praised, blessed, loved, adored and glorified in heaven, on earth, and, and under the earth, by all the creatures of God, and, and by the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Thank you much. Thank you so Mother. much. Thank you so much, Mother Irene and Sister Anne Marie. Folks, again, we'll mention this one more time, the Carmelites of the Holy Face of Jesus. Get to their website, carmelitesholyface.com. You'll see all the different links they have there, history, their life, vocations, prayers, uh, photos, and the donation page. Again, we, I, get, we, I encourage you all to get behind an eagle and uh, support them as I'll be making a donation here shortly and uh, keep spreading word of what they are doing. And uh, folks, listen, until next time, uh, I hope you all have a very wonderful and blessed day. Uh, I wish you, uh, ho hopefully that you all continue to keep along with the programs here. I know I'm, I'm bringing an awful lot uh, to the table here, so uh, try to stay up as best you can. And until next time, my good friends, stay safe. God bless. Ave Maria.